Um, here are our uh, basic identities again, and we're going to do a little bit more work with them in this video lesson. Um, I want to remind you, though that, though, that what you need to do with these identities right here is memorize them. If you don't have them memorized yet, um, hopefully after you do the problems in this next problem set, you will. And if you don't at that time, you need to make some little flashcards or something like that so that these, are, these identities right here, along with that, uh, our first definition for the trigonometric functions, that you have those memorized. Let's look at our first problem on the board here. For problem number one, I say write cotangent theta in terms of sine theta only. So this is, again, just practice at using the identities, but every trigonometric function can be written in terms of every other trigonometric function. So that goes for cotangent theta and sine theta also. So let's start with cotangent theta. So I have cotangent theta, and I'm going to rewrite this in terms of sine theta only. So I'm going to start by writing this as cosine theta over sine theta because that's one of my ratio identities. Now cosine theta I can write in terms of sine theta. It's plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. And that's all over sine theta. So here we have an expression for cotangent theta that involves only the sine of theta. So I've taken cotangent theta and written it in terms of sine theta only. No, I have to leave this plus or minus sign right here until I know the quadrant in which theta terminates. So cotangent theta, one way to write it is plus or minus square root 1 minus sine squared over sine theta. Now, cotangent theta can be written in terms of tangent only, secant only, cosecant only, or cosine only also. Every trigonometric function can be written in terms of every other trigonometric function. So this, again, is just practice at using our basic identities. Here's our next problem. Number two, we want to add sine theta over cosine theta and 1 over sine theta. So I'm going to treat these expressions just like I would treat expressions in algebra. If I'm going to add two fractions, I need a least common denominator. It will be cosine theta times sine theta. This fraction I'll multiply by sine theta over sine theta. That's just the number 1, so I know it's not going to change the value of this. And this expression I'll multiply by cosine theta over cosine theta. So here I'm going to add these two fractions, so I find a common denominator just like I would in algebra. It would be cosine theta times sine theta. I multiply this first fraction by the number 1. That will produce an equivalent fraction, that is a fraction with the same value but with the common denominator. I multiply this fraction by the number 1 in this form and that will produce an equivalent fraction. So here I multiply numerators. Sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta plus 1 times cosine theta is cosine theta all over sine theta cosine theta. Now I have two fractions with the same denominator so I'll add numerators and I end up with sine squared theta plus cosine theta all divided by sine theta times cosine theta. So this is the result of adding these original two expressions right here. All we're doing is practicing using the trigonometric functions in different forms, some of the identities that we have, and um, what we want to be able to do is add, subtract, multiply, and divide expressions that involve the trigonometric functions just like we did expressions in algebra. So here's how we would add sine theta over cosine theta plus 1 over sine theta. Same way we do in algebra. Find a common denominator. Once we have that, we add numerators. This expression right here is the sum of these two expressions. Here's our next problem. 3, I want to multiply sine theta plus 4 times the quantity sine theta plus 3. I'll multiply just like I would multiply binomials in algebra. Sine theta times sine theta, that will be sine squared theta. Sine theta times 3 is 3 sine theta, 4 sine theta, and then 4 times 3. That will be 12. Now, what you notice here is I have two similar terms, 3 sine theta and 4 sine theta. I'll add those two, just like I would in algebra. 3 sine theta plus 4 sine theta would be 7 sine theta. So I end up with sine squared theta plus 7 sine theta plus 12. And that is the result of multiplying these two expressions right here. So again, I would just want to be able to do 
uh, some algebra with expressions that involve sines and cosines and other trigonometric functions as well. Um, the next problems we want to do are involved with what's called verifying identities. Let's look at the first one. For problem number four, we want to verify this identity. Secant theta over cosecant theta is equal to tangent theta. Now, when we say we want to verify an identity, what we're talking about is that we want to show that this is true for all replacements of the variable for which these um, expressions are defined. So what I need to do, and what I'm going to do with these first identities, is simply take the left side and turn it into the right side using a little algebra and my um, basic trigonometric identities. So that's called verifying or proving an identity, and we'll do a lot more of that in the course as time goes by. This is just an introduction to it in which we take the left side of these expressions and turn them into the right side. Let's see what we can do here. Secant theta over cosecant theta, I want to turn that into tangent theta. So I have secant theta over cosecant theta, and I'm going to start by changing these all to sines and cosines. So secant theta is 1 over cosine theta, and cosecant theta is 1 over the sine of theta. So there's a couple of reciprocal identities. Now this is division. I'm dividing by 1 over sine theta. So I'll rewrite this as multiplication by the reciprocal. So 1 over cosine theta times sine theta over 1. Now I multiply numerators, and I end up with sine theta in the numerator here, cosine theta times 1, cosine theta, and sure enough, sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta. Through, so through using a little algebra and my trigonometric identities right here, I've succeeded in taking the left side, secant theta over cosecant theta, and then changing it into tangent theta. So I've verified that this is an identity in trigonometry. That is, this expression is always equal to this expression for all values of theta for which these expressions are defined. So there's tons of identities in trigonometry. This is, just happens to be another one of them, and one in which we prove using our basic identities that we listed uh, in the previous section and at the beginning of this section. Let's try another problem. Let's see if we can change cosecant theta minus sine theta into cosine squared theta over sine theta. So I'm going to take the left side here and try to turn it into the right side. Well, I notice that my right side involves all sines and cosines, so let's change this to 1 over sine. So I'm going to say the left side here is 1 over sine theta minus sine theta. Now here I have two expressions that I can add together. Remember that sine theta by itself is the same as sine theta over 1. So I have a common denominator of sine theta. Let's multiply this by sine theta over sine theta. If I do that, then I end up with 1 over sine theta minus sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta over sine theta. 1 minus sine squared theta all over sine theta. 1 minus sine squared, Pythagorean identity, cosine squared theta over sine theta. So sure enough, there I have succeeded in turning the left side of this expression, of this identity, into the right side through a series of steps that involve both the uh, basic identities from trigonometry and a little algebra or arithmetic here. So I changed cosecant theta to 1 over sine theta. I did that because on the other side I see all sines and cosines. So I'll change the left side into all sines and cosines the easiest way possible. And that, in this case, involves taking cosecant and writing it as 1 over sine. Now I have some algebra to do. I'm going to add this expression to this expression, so I need a common denominator. I multiply by 1 in the appropriate form. That gives me these two fractions to add. And then I see 1 minus sine squared by a Pythagorean identity is cosine squared, and I'm done with that problem right there. So again, I take the left side and change it into the right side. That verifies this identity is true for all values of theta for which these expressions are defined. Let's try one last identity. For this one, let's start by multiplying sine theta times secant theta and sine theta times cosecant theta and see if we get closer to this side right here. Sine theta times secant theta. So I'm just working with the left side. Sine theta times, whoops, almost miswrote that. Secant theta plus sine theta. That's sine theta times cosecant theta. Now, let's change secant theta to 1 over cosine theta. So I have sine theta times 1 over cosine theta, 
And I did that because I know that sine times 1 over cosine will be sine over cosine, and that's going to be tangent. So that takes care of this term. Sine theta times cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta. They're reciprocal, so they, they will multiply to 1. Sine theta over cosine theta, when I multiply these two out, plus sine theta over sine theta, which is 1, when I multiply those two. And sine theta over cosine theta, sure enough, that's tangent theta, plus 1. So, again, by using my basic identities and the little algebra right here, I've succeeded in changing this side into this side, and therefore I've verified this identity for all values of theta for which these expressions are defined. So a little more practice at using the identities in this, session, in, in this, in this section right here. By the time you finish the problems in the problem sets, hopefully you'll have all these basic identities that we listed the, at the beginning of the section memorized. If you don't, you need to put them on flashcards or something like that so that you do have them memorized. You need to have the basic identities memorized and the definition for the six trigonometric functions.